Hi and welcome to another video here from the windowcleaningstore.com. Today it's all about the tips and tricks to getting the most out of your squeegee rubbers. Now one of the questions I usually get asked by newcomers is how long does a squeegee rubber last? Well a squeegee rubber when it's brand new if you take a look right across the entire length of the rubber you have this nice sharp edge. It's that sharp edge that when you go dragging this across a flat glass surface it'll remove all the loosen debris as well as your window cleaning solution. It'll do that 100%. Now after using the rubber over time it'll start to get dull and rounded across the top. You'll no longer have that sharp edge and that's definitely the number one sign where you'll be you know seeing a lot of water being left behind and if you just take a, a visual look at your rubber you'll notice that rounded edge. Another thing you might have is uh, little nicks, cuts, or even sometimes even chunks out of taken out of the rubber you know somewhere along the line you've hit up something to cause damage to the rubber quite often you might see that on the corner where let's say you're doing a lot of windows which would have metal edges like commercial windows and sometimes they have little screws there and just the rubber hitting that little screw can take a nick out of the rubber and cause issues now Something that a lot of newbies don't realize, um, and even some veterans, I have to say, uh, is that the rubber actually has two sides. I see people bring in a squeegee channel to me and say, oh, I need a new rubber. And I take a look at the channel just to you know, find out what size they need. And I'll say, oh, you haven't even used the other side. <clears throat> so first thing I'm going to show you is how to change it to the other side. So with the Unger S channels, they're really quite simple. Any channel that doesn't use any clips, it's simply a case of pulling out the rubber, flipping it over to the other side, inserting it back in. And like I said, in the case of the, uh, the Unger, their handles hold both the channel and the rubber at the same time, so there's no clips needed. So that's simple there. But let's talk about the, the Atori brass channels and any other type of channels that have internal clips. They're a little bit more difficult. And it's usually the people that buy these channels when they're brand new, that they, because it, you know, the rubber doesn't move or anything, they don't even think, oh, this can come out. And flip around. They don't even realize that there's internal clips. So I'm going to show you how they work. So while holding the channel with one hand, you pull the rubber with the other, and you'll notice it's got this internal clip on there. So if, if this side is all worn and we still have a good back side and we want to flip it out, this is what we'll do. So we'll take that off here. We'll take that clip off, and then there'll be a clip on the other side. We don't have to take the other side clip off. We can just leave it on there. And what we can do is we can just pull the rubber out, flip the channel around, reinsert it. When it comes to putting that clip back in, you'll want to squeeze it and push that in all the way. Now that we have this rubber on this side, we're going to have to reapply the clip. So I like to kind of pre-spread the clip a little bit. Then what I'll do is I'll pull the rubber out, kind of hold it. So you see I'm grabbing and holding it. Then I'll take the clip, I'll put it on there, making sure that the rubber goes a little bit past the clip. Squeeze, pinch that, and there you go. We are all set. The rubber has been flipped around, and it's nice and centered on both sides. So the next thing I want to talk about is cutting down squeegee rubbers. And some people might be wondering, well, why, why do I need to cut down a squeegee rubber? Can't you just buy an 18 if you need an 18 or a 12 when you need a 12? And sure, you can certainly do that. But in some instances, you may want to buy a longer piece and cut it down to shorter sizes. Uh, you might want to do that just to, you know, that way you only have to buy a couple of long rubbers and you don't, don't have to buy uh, all big boxes of different sizes. You can just cut down as needed. Another reason why you might want to do that, and it's actually a pretty good way of saving a little bit of money, is let's say you've got, uh, this is a 10 inch squeegee or 12 inch squeegee, and let's say you need something for your 6 inch. Well rather than buying 6 inch squeegee rubbers, what you can do is actually cut down a used 12 inch or use 10 inch rubber, whatever you like, to the smaller size. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, but this is a worn rubber. Why would I want to cut it down and reuse it? Well, quite often when you're doing um, squeegee work, especially if you're fanning, 
it's very, very common for you to get a worn corners. Worn corners happen all the time with, with this side to side motion. And you can actually have a good section in the middle on both sides, back and front. So as you can see, I mean, if you can cut those down, you know, when that gets worn there, if you can cut it down and use it for your six, you can certainly save yourself a lot of money rather than buying six, six inch squeegee rubbers. So I'm going to, I want to show you a couple of different ways of cutting down your squeegee rubbers. Now, you might have you know, some kind of cutting tool or scissors. Problem with regular scissors is when you cut squeegee rubbers, scissors, unless they're really, really top quality, they very rarely give you a nice sharp cut. Uh, sometimes it can be slightly rounded. You get this little point at the end or, you know, actually going through the, the, the depth of the rubber can be on a slant. So, you know, hardly ever get 100% uh, good job out of that. So I want to show you um, a couple methods I've used over the years. There's a uh, kind of a DIY version of cutting rubbers as well as a nice professional tool. So let's take a look at that. So here's a piece of two inch, one by two MDF board. You can grab some of this stuff at your local big box stores or even a piece of plywood or pine or some, some kind of soft wood or soft uh, fiber board. And what you want to do is you want to take your individual channels with the rubber still in them. You want to put them on here and make little markings across this board to measure out your different sizes of squeegee rubbers that you use from time to time. So you've got your 6, you've got your 10, 12, etc. And so you're making all these lines all the way across there. And then when you want to cut down a squeegee rubber, all you need to do is take that squeegee rubber, put it to the end, and let's say if you want to make a 6, 6 inch uh, cut, you can take a nice sharp fresh blade on, you know, like a little pocket scraper or even, you know, your big scraper, your four inch or six inch scraper. And what you want to do is you want to go with it. You've marked that line for that size and just kind of look overhead and then just cut down. Now, the reason why you want that surface, that board to be a soft wood is that you want that blade to cut not only through the rubber, but also into the board underneath that gives you a nice clean cut. If you had a very hard surface and you're trying to do that, you'd get down to the bottom and you'd probably find that you haven't gone all the way through the rubber. And then you'd, you'd be pulling at it and then of course you'd end up with like a little nick. So like I said, if you got a board like this and you can put all your common squeegee sizes, this is a great way, like I said, you can use a pocket scraper or you know large scraper. Just make sure that you're coming down nice and straight. Now, if you don't like that method, there's always the Ronin multi-cut tool. This is a great little tool. It's got these replaceable blades. It's got the, with this base here, which is called like an anvil. It's kind of like that board that we're, you know, that the fiber board. It, it is plastic, but because it is a professional tool and you're using very sharp razors and it's, everything's being held nice and straight, these give you very, very straight cuts. So let's say I was going to cut my six inch now. From an old rubber simply a case of just lining that up coming in with the tool and there you go even much better than my my board and razor method of course this costs costs more this is more diy i think you'll find too using the ronin cutters that they work great for these Mormon liquidator channels uh, for getting that angle. Now some people don't care for the Mormon rubber, the actual Mormon rubber. I know I'm not a fan of this rubber, but uh, you can use any rubber. I prefer to put Ettore rubbers in here and cutting that angle uh, very fast using this. And keep in mind that making that angle yourself doesn't matter if, you have, if you're 100% or not because it's not the uh, part that touches the glass that's actually being cut. And speaking of Mormon liquidator channels, uh, what the main reasons why this channel even came out in the first place was to be a low detailing squeegee. They did that by having this on an angle and that in combination with having dog-eared uh, clips at the end helps put a little bit more pressure on the edges so you can get up nice and tight on those edges 
and uh, do a good job. Now, dog earring is not something new. Um, back when, I, even when I started window cleaning um, back in 2007, and I'm sure long before that, uh, the uh, veterans uh, very often would dog ear their channels, and it's simply a case of taking a pair of pliers or whatever, and just pulling the, the metal forward a little bit on both ends. So it's putting pressure on the rubber for squeegeeing and getting up nice close to the edge. Now, I was never a fan of that dog earring technique, and I actually found that what worked best for me, as you can see, like when you buy a new squeegee channel, there always seems to be a lot of rubber on over the edge. You know, and when you're going down a window, and if you go across the lip at all, that, that rubber rides up, leaves a bit of water behind. What I found was just bring the rubber in so that there's only a sixteenth of an inch on either side. That's why it's good to know a good way to get a nice, sharp, accurate cut with your squeegee rubbers. Because using a tool like this, even my DIY method with the razor blade, um, a lot better than doing it with scissors. You get a lot more accurate cuts and having that with very little rubber on each end will certainly cut down on detailing. So I definitely would try that method before starting to get the pliers out and doing dog earring yourself. So the last thing I want to point out about squeegee rubber, is, you know, in order to get the most life out of them, is like any tools that you have in your toolbox, take good care of them. Uh, one thing I used to do when I was a window cleaner, and I know a lot of window cleaners uh, don't actually do this, and that's thoroughly clean your tools at the end of every day. Because you can imagine if you've got this squeegee just sitting in a pail of dirty water overnight, you don't know what kind of stuff is in that dirt, in that dirty water. And there can actually be stuff that just kind of eats away at rubber. Or because, you know, you didn't clean your bucket out and you just dumped this in there, you don't even know if this thing is sitting in there with like the corner bent. So it's sitting in the bucket and there's a couple other things on top. The squeegee rubber is getting uh, chewed up or bent up or even... You know, there's too much weight, the channel can actually even bend. Uh, and that's another thing, too, is that sometimes people think that their squeegee rubber is no good. And if you actually look down the line of the channel, you can see that the channel's bent. So here are you know, some tips for you for squeegee rubbers. I'm hoping uh, you find some of this information useful. And, uh, yeah, we'll continue on bringing in as many tips as we can to help you uh, get the most out of your tools. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Bye for now.